Hi, I'm Dustin Mason from Performance Lexus in St. Catharines. And today I'm super excited to show you the all new Lexus TX. Now the TX really fills a hole for car buyers everywhere. Those people that want to have three rows and some cargo space, but don't want a minivan. This is a segment that we've seen, you know, the RXL or the RX 350L try to do, but it was always that third row that really held back that segment. So let me show you if this one checks the box. So under the hood, this one beside me is the TX500H. It also comes in a TX350. The main difference is the 350 has a turbocharged 2.4 liter four cylinder engine that is pushing out around 300 pounds of torque and around 260 horsepower, something like that. Or you could get the 500, which has that same power plant, but adds things like a hybrid powertrain aspect as well as direct four and gives you more like 360 horsepower and like 400 pounds of torque. So in this video, we're going to show you the 500H and a few of the Things. So let's get into it. Let me show you the front end first. So the front end on this is again, one of those other steps towards the modernization of cars everywhere. We see a very blended in grill. Now there is a little bit of texture here that sort of continues what used to be the spindle grill. And actually you can still see little segments of spindle grill in between those bars. And I think this really started with EVs. I think back to like when Audi released the e-tron and how that front grill kind of changed. And then Lexus with the RZ and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The industry is kind of going this way. And at first when I saw it online, I wasn't too sure about it, but in person, it has a lot of presence. And I hope that makes sense to you <laughs> watching. Underneath that, we have a little bit of a lip here and a, and a bottom lip with some venting as well. There's some sensors integrated into that. And then off to the side, we have some more protruding sort of aerodynamic pieces with a turning light and a fog light and the, another sensor. Above that, we do still have the washer for the headlights. Now, if you haven't used one of these before, I promise you it's useful. Just think of in the winter time, especially in Canada or maybe some Northern states, the whole car gets covered in salt all the time. And you'll hit that mist feature to clean your windshield, but your headlights will get caked with the salt and the dirt and all this other stuff where this will give that a little bit of a mist and clean off. Now, an interesting aspect of this headlight, by the way, that I noticed earlier today is that big check mark that is your daytime running light, but also is your signal in amber. And that's part of the presence of this car, in my opinion, is it's so huge here. And that front end is so, you know, flat up and down, and then it flows outward. And I think on the road, that's what's gonna draw people's attention because the vehicle's already so big. Now also, I did notice when I was driving it, there's a line here. I hope you can see it in this color. It's a line that you can see when you're driving it behind the hood, or sorry, behind the wheel on the hood that gives it a little bit of a vision line. And I really like that. And I also like that it's a very flat hood and very wide with the Lexus M kind of just in this little piece here. And actually, if you look closely at the Lexus emblem, it's still the same L, but it's different. For some reason, the proportions of this Lexus emblem is different. I don't think many people are gonna notice that, but if I put it beside another Lexus model, maybe one that hasn't been refreshed or anything like that, maybe not a new one, it is different. For what that's worth, that's my two cents on it. So the side profile of the TX is huge. In fact, TX kind of is supposed to be like Texas when they started the marketing for this because everything's bigger in Texas, they say. Even though this isn't made in Texas, it's still a funny, sort of relation. And speaking of bigger, this is a 22 inch noise reduction wheel on the RX 500. Now, if you haven't used a noise reduction wheel before, you know that when you hit a set of train tracks or a pothole and you hear that like, dun, the noise reduction wheel has a way of managing the pressure changes inside the tire and gets rid of that sort of, you know, dun, whatever you want to call that noise. I really like the styling of this. There is a lot going on here. We see layers to the wheel, like this outer piece that sort of goes in this outer V actually looks like it's layered on top of the inner V. And I think it's like, it's almost like a capped alloy wheel. I'm not too, too sure. It looks great close up. It looks great far away. It really ties in this incognito color. By the way, that's what this gray is called. And behind here is a huge break on the RX 500. It's like a six piston, big surface area, not super touchy, which I always like, especially on a hybrid, because when you brake, sometimes you're just charging the system up and it doesn't feel too touchy, which is nice. Then we have a body matched fender flare, that really new, nice F performance logo. It says F sport, but it has the F performance type F to it. Some blacked out mirrors, some blacked out roof rails and some accents that instead of being chrome are also like a dark chrome. But more importantly, I'm six foot one. Look how tall this car is. It's absolutely huge because it's supposed to be anywhere you sit in the car, in this vehicle, this truck, whatever you wanna call it, should be the same experience. It doesn't matter if you're in the front seat or the back seat. And that's why it's so big, even going to the end here, which again, I'm six foot one. It doesn't taper off. It stays very tall right to the back. It does have my favorite door handles, the electronic latch, which I love. But what I noticed is just the sound alone of shutting it is very solid. In fact, I'm just gonna do that one more time. 
I think it's one of the most solid ones in the Lexus lineup. I just think maybe it's the size of the doors, maybe it's the weight, but I would say it's, it's one of the heaviest and most solid doors we have right now. Going to the rear, another really big detail to, to pay attention to, no pun intended, is this piece of glass. So this is where the third row is. And you'll notice it's not a little corner glass. It's not, you know, just a little port side hole that you're gonna peek through. It's huge. And you really feel that when you're inside. So after this big piece of glass, we have some blacked out bits and then we get to the rear. So at the rear of the TX, the presence continues in my opinion. We have this very big open space with a big rear windshield. It does have an exposed white I'm not sure why Lexus did that, but I don't really care that much because I love everything else about the TX, so I'm not gonna hang up on that. A similar tail light to what we've seen in other Lexus vehicles. It's a little bit different, but it's close enough. And above that is the LEXUS. And I always say it's like that tail light is underlining the word Lexus, which I absolutely love. Underneath that, we have a little bit of two tone here, some piano black with some silver, and then sort of a rear diffuser and no exhaust visible. In fact, I have to get really far under there to see any exhaust whatsoever because as we know, the industry is going towards EV and we need to future proof how our vehicles look. So though, you know, that's why grills are changing. That's why the exhausts are tucked in a little bit more in a lot of these cars because we don't want them to look super outdated in a couple years. Also, you'll notice TX500H is followed by Direct4, which is that branded all-wheel drive system that is like performance oriented. But there's something else I need to show you back here, and that's this. With the third row up, there is enough space for seven pieces of luggage. I only have six in here because I ran out. I do like to travel, but not, I don't have seven pieces of luggage. And with the fact that this vehicle can hold seven people and seven pieces of luggage is huge because you don't have to leave one of your family members at home, just so you have a place to put your luggage and you could actually use the SUV, what it's made for which is to move people and their things. And if you're in the market and you don't wanna go minivan, usually this is the part. Usually SUVs have enough space for the people, but then nothing else behind that third row. In fact, even our LX and GX, which are big truck body on frame construction, don't have that space behind that third row. And the TX does, which is why it's the biggest Lexus ever made when it comes to that. So back here, we have a lot of space coming from that third row out here. In fact, you can see the, the luggage is almost so perfect. You know when you go on an airplane and the overhead bin are like the perfect size for your carry-on. That's exactly how this rear is. It's almost like someone finally designed a car that was made for that carry-on bag luggage, just like how the planes have it as the perfect size. So that's great. Another thing is the fact that this doesn't taper off very much, a little bit, but not much. And that's why you could fit all the luggage back here, hockey bags, whatever it is. You can also fold down the seats from back here as well, which I'm not gonna do with all the luggage back here. And that's pretty much it. Underneath, there is a temporary spare tire. I think it had a weird phrase to it. It said a small temporary spare tire, something like that. And there's a little bit of storage there for things like the tonneau cover, which is always nice. Cause then if you have it out and then you decide you need the three rows, it's nice to have somewhere to put it. And you can put that under that fake floor, which is great. Okay, so sitting in the TX, there was one thing I was a little bit nervous about when I saw the pictures online. And the pictures online made it look like the inside was gonna be the same as an RX or an NX. Like there wasn't gonna be any character here that's unique to the TX, but I was so wrong. You can only really appreciate it when you get in. Everything from how the cup holders are set up here. Like they have these little modules that come out. Like how genius is that? So if you spill your coffee or anything like that, you can actually take this out, hose it off in the driveway, dry it off and put it back in. Or if you wanted to move them around, like maybe you only need one cup holder and you want more space for your phone or whatever. Now you have like this little shelf here. So this is absolutely genius and nowhere online did I find this advertised. And I think that's really cool that it was like a little surprise and you just pop them back in. And they have the little divot for your like coffee mug handle, which is really nice too. Also another Lexus first in here. And I didn't understand it when I read it in the brochure. It's this butterfly armrest. So what it is, is as the driver or whoever is sitting with their arm on the armrest, the passenger can still open their side. And it, it doesn't come over into the space of anybody. It just sort of folds in place. I mean, you could open up both if you wanted for sure. And there's a deep space in there, which is really nice. But if you didn't want to disturb the other person, the way it's designed is that it's out of the way, which is really nice. In front of that, we have a wireless charger here on this model that slides forward to some more um, storage space and one of the cigarette lighter type outlets. There's USB C's everywhere in this car and I'll, I'll point them out as we go. Maybe we'll count them as we go. Above that, we have automatic parking, intelligent park assist, as well as bird's eye view on this model, a couple USB C's, some vents, the four way switch, and then this massive optically bonded glass screen, which we're seeing all over the place on Lexus V 
vehicles with the new Lexus interface. However, I did notice the animations are just a little bit better in the TX. So even this screen that I'm on right now is the power delivery screen and it just looks different. Like, I don't know, everything's kind of blacked out. It's a little bit more sporty looking. The animations look different. So that's pretty cool. And also I noticed in the screens, you can like do things like fold down those third row seats just from being in here, which is kind of cool. Also, we have all the latest in, you know, proactive driving assist and pedestrian detection and all the LSS 3.0 type stuff. Uh, you can change the ambient lighting, that sort of thing. Another really nice detail is right here on the dash is like that ultra suede Alcantara type feeling. And it's kind of for no reason, like it's just there to appreciate. Maybe you're gonna reach out and touch a little bit, but it is there and that's kind of cool and it differentiates it a little bit. The steering wheel itself is like the F performance one. It's very good to grip. There's this perforated section on the sides, which adds some grip to it. And then it has the intelligent, intelligent touch or whatever for the heads up display, where you just kind of set your fingers on it and you can change what you see. Now, I was very surprised because again, nowhere in any brochure does it say this. When you're changing your display, normally all you can change is maybe what feature you're seeing over and over again. But with this one, I notice it goes, it says meter display, one, two, three, four, or sorry, three. And what you see on the main gauge cluster here is a new combination of everything. Like there's EV drive ratio with, you know, on the left it says a percentage and on the right it shows, you know, where the power is going. And then you go to, you know, number three where it shows like your music on the left and on the right it shows your, your map. And the way it's displayed, it's almost like reconfiguring when you're doing it. And also even just the gauge cluster itself is different. And it's hard to explain. It's like a flat panel with very sharp lines. It's very easy to look at. Like it's not straining to your eyes whatsoever. Everything's super clear. There is lots going on. Like it shows you all of the safety features that you have on and stuff like that. But I'm just impressed that it's different and there's no mechanical or physical attributes to it, which is okay. It's just a flat screen. Other than that, we have some other angles that are different. Like on the left here is a Mark Levinson sound system, by the way. And one of the speakers is sort of integrated into this little triangle and it just creates a little bit of depth to the, the door panel because there's space for that. I feel like they didn't have to sacrifice any of that. I did notice when I opened up the panel roof, even that first pane of glass is the biggest I've seen. Straight up in the Lexus lineup, that's the biggest piece of glass that I've seen for a front part of the panel glass. So when it moves back, it's not like the opening is any bigger than any of the other ones, but still. Other than that, on the interior, the ambient lighting is gorgeous. The front cockpit is very nice. The vision that you can see, there's really no blind spots. There's lots of glass and, and windows, but it's the back seat where this car is gonna really stand out. So sitting in the second row of the TX, this particular model is the six passenger. So it has the captain's chairs. You can get a lot of them, most of them, are the seven passenger where it's a bench here. So for this one, it's the six passenger. And back here is where you really start to realize exactly what Lexus set out to do was that every seat in the TX is supposed to be an experience, a, lux a luxurious experience. And in the second row, that's exactly what it is. I have tons of height for myself. The seating is big, like I can fit in here no problem at all. I have heated and cooled seats in this row. I have climate controls. There's two USB-Cs and we have the modular cup holders in the center here. And not only that, in the center, on this little council that they have here, there's like these edges, these little holders for iPads and tablets, which I saw kind of hidden in a picture. And there's like these little rubber sort of padding and you just put your iPad there or your tablet there and it holds it perfectly. And then you could plug it into the USB-C. But I realized something even cooler when I was playing with it just now, the whole thing comes out. So you could actually get rid of it and put something bigger here or if you needed something else and it comes out. And if you needed to clean it, like again, you could take it out and get all the French fries and stuff from underneath. And this is what I mean by everything is just so thought out. They really just did a really good job with that. Other than that, I have an armrest on each side. I have this window shade curtain, the electronic door latch, some space in the center, tons of light from the panel roof. But also you'll notice in the cabin, there's microphones everywhere. Like there's a microphone above my head, there's two microphones up there because the TX has active noise canceling. So just like when you you're on an airplane and you put your Dr. Dre beats or your Bose headphones on and it has active noise canceling and all of a sudden you can't hear the jet engines anymore or the air moving or whatever, the turbulence, the TX has that as well, where it tries to quiet that cabin any chance it gets by using the very complicated speaker system that's already in here for not just music, but also to make it quieter, which I think is really cool. Okay, so before I get into the third row, I'm gonna show you a few of the usability features of the second row. 
So one of them is the sound and button. There's this little electronic button to initiate the sliding of that seat to get into the back, creates this big space, which is great. But also, let's say you needed to make this whole second row flat. All you do is you fold it, and then there's an extra lever, and it goes down, and now you have a big flat space for turning this SUV into like a truck bed back here. But for now, we're just gonna use that button again, now that it's locked in, and that'll slide, and now I can get into the back. Once I'm back here, I'll lock that back into space. Now I could slide this back a whole lot more so that the person up there has more space. Uh, but for right now, you can see how much space there is between me and that second row. I'm six foot one, my head has room, my legs have room. I have a lot going on back here. You'll notice it's only two seats in this third row. It's not three seats. So each seat has a decent amount of space. Another interesting thing is you'll see my leg isn't super bent. It's not like my, my feet are up high. There's actually a little bit of a rise here. Like I have leg room, which is great. I see some nice USBs back here, USB-C, sort of right integrated into this little stopper. And there's a new button that I found where I can recline and move forward and backwards. So let's say you did need some more cargo space. I can move a little bit up, or if I wanted to chill, I could lean it way back, like way back. I'm pretty reclined right now. And that's all from an electronic button right to each side. Also, there is another tablet holder. This tablet holder is everywhere in this car. There's, it's not quite as soft and rubberized as the ones up front, but there's a tablet holder. There's still the square cup holder. It doesn't come out though, which is totally fine. Padded armrest, Alcantara, ultra suede back here, some vents, some lights, and overall, just very useful. I wanted to make sure when I made this video that I wasn't just making up anything. So I went for a ride and I sat in the back seat while one of the, the salespeople drove me around just to make sure it actually was comfortable back here for me. And the funniest thing was when he looked in the rearview mirror and he's like, it feels like you're in another car. Like it feels like you're so far back and looking forward, it really does. It does feel like I'm pretty far from the front, but because of that, I have a lot of space. There's a lot of surface area between me and that you know first row and second row and i can be on a long car ride and sit back here no problem so you might ask who is the tx4 well with a thoughtful interior a very usable cargo area a presence on the road because of the size and a comfort level and high tech with the latest Lexus you know, features and technology. It's the ultimate family road trip vehicle for sure. Anytime if you wanna haul people around, this is gonna be the go-to. But even for someone that just wants a bigger vehicle for you know road trips or the, the utilitarian part of it, this still checks it off and you don't have to spend a ton of money to get into the TX. The starting price of the TX350 in Canada is in like the low 70s. I think it's like 72,000, something like that. Yes, the 500 is more in the 80s because of that powertrain and all the extra features that come with the F performance packages on the RX 500. But even the regular one checks a lot of those boxes. It's very fuel efficient on both the hybrid and the gas because of the four cylinder turbo setup. And I think just overall, it's going to be one of the best sellers in the Lexus lineup because of that. So stay tuned. There's gonna be a lot more TX videos as I get to know the vehicle, as I get to try different things out. So let me know in the comments below what you wanna see in terms of Lexus content and TX content on both the 350 and the 500. It's gonna be exciting to try it in the winter as well. And we'll go from there. So I'm Dustin Mason from Performance Lexus in St. Catharines. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.